At the beginning of the coronavirus chaos in America, New York was one of the hotbeds of cases and deaths related to the virus. Now, a large part of the deaths came in nursing homes, and it was uh, now, we see, caused by orders from New York Governor Andrew Cuomo. A re- but a report last month by the New York Attorney General said Cuomo's administration underreported the deaths by as much as 50 percent. Then, last week, a member of his own staff admitted behind closed doors that they had sat on vital information out of fear it would be used against them. Yesterday, after both Republican and Democratic lawmakers in New York were calling for investigations into the Cuomo administration, Governor Cuomo had a press conference and was on the defensive. So there's no, there is nothing uh, to investigate. All the numbers we produced were exactly right. Uh, We didn't provide all the information that was requested that did create a void and misinformation did fill the void. And that misinformation gave people aggravation and confused people and confused people who lost a loved one uh, and allowed conspiracy theories to fester. And that aggravated people who lost a loved one, because now you don't know what to believe. And that, that is uh, the last thing anyone wanted to create. Joining me now to delve into this further is Washington Times reporter Valerie Richardson. Valerie, welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me on. So, uh, Valerie, let me ask you this question. Is there anything here to investigate? <laughs> well... It would seem there is. Uh, there is. There's quite a bit of um, momentum right now into, at the very least, a state investigation. And then you have Republicans as well as some Democrats saying that the Biden administration needs to get involved with the DOJ investigation. Now, that's going to be interesting because then you've got a situation where, um, you know, one of the rising stars of the party, or he was until maybe some of this sort of festering, you know, being called up for an investigation by the DOJ, it's, you know, it's really not anywhere that I think a lot of Democrats want to go, but there is um, increasingly pressure on, on, um, on both on the Democratic Party to to do something about the the Cuomo scandal. He's got there are state legislators who are Democrats who are you know tweeting about how uh, how he needs to uh, tell what happened and 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 disclose more and be more transparent and they're and, and they're contradicting what he said at his press conference saying that. Well, the main point he made at his press conference was he said that um, he said that he had delayed releasing information uh, to the state legislature in response to their request for information about nursing home COVID deaths, um, it, it, so that he could this department inquiry instead, which came in August. And he said that um, that his delay while he was uh, taking care of the Justice Department request is what basically caused the. Um, what he called a void in, in information that was filled with, you know, quote, conspiracy theories. And he says that's really what the problem was. He, he, what, what he took responsibility for was not being as prompt as he had, um, as he might have been in, deal, in responding to the state legislature. But he also said that he told the leadership what was going on, and the leadership has come back and said, no, we didn't hear that. And these are Democrats. So they, they said that, that they were unaware of it, a Justice Department um, uh, request for information. So, so right there, you've got people accusing him. I mean, I don't literally accusing him of lying. Uh, Ron Kim, who's a Democratic state representative, specifically said lying yesterday. So, um, so yeah, he's uh, even people in his own party are turning on him now. So, Valerie, what part of the March 25th order that he issued regarding? nursing homes saying that they are prohibited from requiring a hospitalized resident who is determined medically stable to be tested for the COVID-19 prior to admission or readmission. I mean, that seems to be really at the heart of, from from what I've read through this, kind of the, the cover up here of sitting on these numbers, because that was now, I mean, clearly a very, very bad decision. And, and yes, and, and, and what he, um, in his defense, or in, what he and, and, and officials in his administration have, have said is that, you know, look, nobody knew at that point what was going on. We, they, you know, at that point, they were still saying people shouldn't wear masks. I mean, it was, it was, there was a lot of 
um, there was a lot of confusion. There was a lot of, uh, you know, lack of information, lack of data. And so he, you know, he, which is what he pretty much attributes that order to. Um, but what his critics will tell you is that a lot of states at first did the same thing. And then when they saw that this was going to be a disaster, they revoked that order and his stuck around for six weeks. And, um, and in fact, some of the, uh, there were, there were, are articles where administration officials will say, you know, we're not going to discriminate against COVID patients. In other words, implying that if you don't let a person who had tested positive for COVID but had been treated at a hospital and now could leave, if you don't let that person back into a nursing home, that you're somehow discriminating against them. Um, so it, uh, so that's uh, that's the problem he's got. His order stuck around for for a very long time, and. Um, and then he didn't release the information very quickly about how many people actually died. And then, of course, it, it, it falls to Letitia James, the state attorney general, who was herself a Democrat, to come out with this damning report last month. Right. Um, so, yeah, you could. You, I think what he would, what he's arguing is that, well, it's my handling of it. It's not what I did. It's my handling. But you know, the Democrats are really having none of it at this point. But it, it, it appears to me that he set on the numbers or covered it up because he realized that was a mistake in what he did. Instead of coming clean with it back then, he's tried to sweep it under the rug. Yeah, and he's and he's you know he said well it was because we were dealing with this Justice Department request et cetera but you know it, it, people are have sort of had it I don't think that that right. I don't it didn't seem like a lot of people were were terribly convinced by that argument and so what you have now is basically what's going to happen next I mean sort of the minimum the state legislature could do at this point would be to um would be to to revoke his emergency powers which they right. appear to be poised to do. Well, that, that would be a good first step, uh, not just in New York, but maybe in some other states as well. Valerie, we're out of time. I want to thank you so much for, uh, for joining us today, and uh, we'll continue to track this and uh, talk to you again soon.